Hi, everyone. This is Tara Sardav, president and founder of Lean In Pakistan Foundation. And I have the distinct pleasure for our Lean In Pakistan Foundation story number 37 to be interviewing the incredible Nasreen Iqbal, quite an icon, I must say, especially in the education field. And she is chair of the Lean In Pakistan uh, Islamabad Digital Literacy Circle. It is such a pleasure to have you here today, Nasreen. Well, I'm very pleased to be here too, because this is digital literacy, something which I've really been interested in. And uh, so, can you just ask me some questions, please? Fantastic. So first, this interview is about you. So right. the first question is if you can share a little bit about your journey. And also, if you could just sit back a little, because you're, uh, we're just seeing one eye. Yes, looking gorgeous. Okay, okay, okay. No, my, so my perfect. phone was too close. Perfect. I couldn't hear you very well, unfortunately. Okay. That's okay. I'll talk louder. So why don't we begin by asking if you could introduce yourself as well as uh, describe your childhood, growing up in Islamabad, I believe. Um, it's, it's very interesting. My childhood was, um, you know, my father was in the military and we were moving practically every year or every two years. And uh, the good thing was that as you moved from one city to another, one picked up a lot of social skills, how to adapt to new environment, new situations, make new friends. So I think that has really helped me in my life as a professional now. And, um, well, I must say that I had the opportunity of studying at very good schools in Pakistan. When I've been now recently, actually since the last, I think, 30, 32, 34 years, that I've been traveling all over the world for education, conferences, boots, training, so on. And they would always ask, where did I get my education? And I said, here in Pakistan. So. We have some very good stories of our education experiences right here. And um, now, um, uh, again, I got married to um, somebody in the military. So uh, because of that, I had a scholarship to go to America, but I couldn't go because very difficult. Uh, to send girls to the U.S. by the parents. Uh, well, I did my, uh, I went to Kinnaird, I did my Sydney Cambridge, and then I went to Kinnaird, and then I did my B.Ed. And uh, I was, I started teaching, uh, right, and I was a principal when I was 27 years old for, for, for uh, Garrison. Montessori school and later on when my, my husband decided to retire I had plenty of experience then I opened the school and uh, I was advised by my principal of Kinnaird who was visiting that it should be for um, middle and low middle class because they formed the backbone of the country and I really believe and I think I made the correct choice and uh, I, I'm very pleased about what I did. And later on, I had training at Portland State University in education. And then I also, because we, we were doing a lot of work in peace education, human rights education. So I was selected for a course on conflict management across cultures at School for International Training in Vermont. And um, well, I'm very pleased to say that I've always um, conducted the plenaries and um, uh, well, at that time, there wasn't much of talk about digitalization or anything like that. And now uh, in our own school, as I said, it's for middle and low middle class students. We had evening schools for multi-grade for street children. And I had a vocational training center as well, where for one year, the girls after one year, they got um, a, a, their diploma in garment making. 
And uh, well, now what I have realized, and especially looking at other developed countries, that wherever there has been digital literacy, the women, girls sitting in their homes have been able to really market very well and become independent of a third party. And during COVID, this is what I realized, that there were so many women I knew who were doing this and they were able to have steady incomes and you know, whatever their products were, whatever the produce was. And this is something which I really thought that in this, to make young women or any woman self-sufficient and to be able to look after their homes, because when a woman earns that money, she spends on her family and on her community. And this is what has inspired me uh, now. Of course, I'm going to be asking somebody to help as well to do this, uh, get into digital literacy for women so that they can you know, improve the quality of their life. They become independent and the younger women in particular, they would be able to learn this very quickly. So there you are. When you were a little girl, is this something that was encouraged by your family or was it considered unusual? Uh, were you different than the other girls or did your family readily encourage you in all these pursuits and do sit back? Because we love to see all of now, you. Now, I'll just, it's, it's very, very interesting. Um, what I did as a little girl, you know, my father was posted in Nosheva and there was no English medium school and at home, we would speak in Punjabi, which was our mother tongue. And, um, well, there was a bit of Urdu too. So when my turn came to go to school, I was taken to this government school by my elder sister, the Tonga. And uh, uh, when I saw the school, I said, I am not going to study here. When I came back, I told my parents, I said, I am not studying in that school. Which school do you want to go to? I said, I don't know, but I don't like that school and I'm not going there. So the following day again, my older sister, you know, they braided my hair and I was put in the tongue and taken away. The school was way out in the bazaar. And during break time, when I saw the gate, I just walked out and walked home, which was a good four miles. This little four-year-old girl walks. Four years old. When I came home, did you say four, four years old? old? Did you say I was four, four years, years old? old. And yes, you four walked four old. miles out of school. Out of school, went back home. So my mother said, How did you come? And I just told her a lie. I said, Papa came and dropped me. I was crying away and so on. How did you my even know the way? Very late, and they thought I was lost. So my mother said, "Oh, she's playing at the in the backyard." But and how did you? Of course, well, I. Like, and then just listen what happened. The second, third day again, I just created a fuss. Then my father, he uh, at in those days there were some British officers too. So he called them and he asked the women who were all educated and said, "Why don't you all volunteer and open up a school for?" Uh, the young the young ones and that's what they did and it was <coughs> and that's we did gardening can you imagine all the new concepts of keeping children outdoors gardening growing vegetables and and i fell in love with my books and uh, my imagination, you know, I'd sit down with those books and read them and so on. So that's how my journey began. And my no, father, but... later on, 
whenever I asked him for something, he said, look, you are capable of doing this. You can climb mountains and this is a, nothing for you. So my father, he is very grateful in my life. He kept encouraging me to do whatever I wanted. But Nasreen, at age four, you knew exactly what you liked and what you didn't like and what you wanted, and you even knew the way home? Yes, yes. It was actually a straight road into the bazaar, way in, and then from there to the cantonment. So this is how I just managed to arrive. And even now, I get amazed, because later on, my husband was posted there, and I went to see that old school. Well, I was supposed to, and I was surprised how I did it. So that's it. Anything else? I think that's marvelous. Absolutely marvelous. And you spoke about going to Kanaid, which is in Lahore, in the Punjab, and your home, you spoke Punjabi. But today you live in Pindi. And so how did you end up living in Rao Pindi? When my husband um, finally uh, left the army, at that time we decided to open up a school. We had no money, but I had a lot of passion, a lot of experience, and that's how we, we did it. And uh, what I'm very pleased is that it was after I opened um, the school that I got an opportunity to go through the, um, uh, the these were special programs by the Americans for my um, administration, school administration training to the US and there were about 10 of us from Pakistan who were selected that year. And again, I'm very pleased to say that at the end, you know, they wrote something about me. They said Nasreen Iqbal and nine others came from Pakistan to attend these courses. It was a principal kid and my God, in those days, we were really fated and taken all around America and we had a good exposure and so on. But I was particularly very happy about the School for International Training, where I met women from all the conflict areas. And again, I was selected to go at that time to Rwanda, um, you know, to see exactly, because at that time it was still, the, uh, the conflict was going on, but my family didn't allow. They said it's not safe at all. And then later on, uh, through UNESCO, actually UNESCO uh, sent me for international training. They trained me, then they sent me for to represent Pakistan, and I on peace education, human rights education, and later on heritage education. And uh, I went, I've been to South, I'll begin from that, and Japan twice, South Korea once, Thailand, um, Australia, and this was Adelaide, and um, Sri Lanka twice, uh, India three times, um, Egypt, and uh, uh, through the British Council, I've been various times to uh, UK, and that mostly was about heritage education. Uh, you know, me and my team became specialists in heritage education for young people. Mm, I, I was commissioned to write a series of project books called Heritage in Young Hands. This was a teacher's resource kit, which was written by a few countries all over the world, and ours was considered to be a good one. So because of that, I, I've been given trainings, and here in Pakistan too. And the good thing was I've trained masters of as a master trainer, I went and I trained all the district heads of India and of Sri Lanka on peace education. It was a good model, but somehow, unfortunately, we don't carry it forward because unless the government comes steps in and because wide dissemination is required. So this is another area which I really feel that um, unless we know our heritage, unless we know our identity. And it is, of course, evolving all the time. So this is, um, I feel, you know, our language, our, you know, the culture, and then we have such a rich culture, such so many different cultures in Pakistan. They're all unique, and there's so much of learning, and then, you know, and 
bring them together, uh, exchanging our experiences and all, which will add to social cohesion as well. And that's something which we need very badly. Yes, Tarek? You are simply have, have amazing. You, Talk about what have been unusual things in your career, things that have happened that have surprised you, unusual things in your career, things that have happened that have surprised you. And lean back and speak, um, yes. Anything that surprised you in your career? In my career? Well, well, let me just tell you that, you know, we do a lot of teacher training and teacher development. But that has to basically come from within. Unless you yourself have the interest and passion to look for um, and to improve yourself, uh, you, the osmosis doesn't take place. Now, I, uh, when I was very small and we belonged, to, my parents belonged to a village and I went there during winter holidays. And I went to see, I went to, a school with one of my distant cousins who was studying. Oh, I just lean to back, school. lean back. The school, sorry. And what uh, I said to lean me? back. Yeah, yeah. And when I uh, went to the school, it was winters, so they were sitting out in the open because they did not have electricity at that time, and uh, there were mats in the yard. And the teacher, she was she just done her class five from the same school, and now she was teaching. She was, and she looked old to me because I was just about five years, six years old. And she did uh, a, a, a poem with us, which was called Mehunili Churia. And she weaved a whole story about this Nili Churia that she lives in the tree, and she told us the whole life cycle. Can you imagine? Now, this girl from the village. And then she, we made little churias of clay, and she brought in uh, indigo with which we dye our clothes, and we covered that, and these were put on the walls for us to take home. And then she brought in the butter, which she dyed in the indigo, and all became nearly churias. It was a lesson in project-based learning. And, you know, I learned this uh, all the details of it when I went to a Portland State in the Portland University about cooperative, which was called cooperative learning, and now it's mostly called project based learning. So, these things, this is something which will always remain with me that unless the teacher herself is interested, wants to make it was fun, it was play. So, that's something which surprised me. And then another thing which surprised me was when I saw um, Dr. Yasmin Laris. Uh, I went and attended one of their, um, I think it was an international conference at Makli. That surprised me. I did not expect that they would have these, all these you know, bamboo huts with everything, which, which is so I mean, uh, cost effective and very comfortable and you we stayed for one night in those rooms and uh, you know the um, stone which they made so these things and now more so i'm very impressed that they and the bamboo huts which they're making because this is part of our heritage and so on this is how i came to know yasmin after since a long time and i mean i'm sort of uh, I do get involved in her work as well. And uh, uh, now they've, they've made um, these bamboo huts on stilts so that for future floods, they would be safe. The people would be safe. And uh, very recently too, actually she sent me um, all this information. And this, you know, what surprises me is that in, and, and how well those women in the villages, once they learn the skill, how well they do. And you know, two, three of them went to London last year. Uh, actually, Prince Charles was head of um, their organization, and he called them there. And I was also in London, so I went and attended that. 
So women, especially... Yes, we saw that. You know, when Yasmin, when Yasmin Lari, Larson Hadji posted all of that, it was fabulous seeing your pictures with her. We were so proud of you. And you're such the pride of Pakistan. Well, well, I am certainly not the pride of Pakistan, but I do my little bit. And here, you know, what I would like to say is that I went to Habib University once. And their mission, um, I can't remember what it is, but Yosin, which was given by Hazrat Ali. Now, this is what I would like to end my interview with. Now, what is Yosin? Yosin is self-cultivation. It's improving your self-worth. And it is the most beautiful, Haseen, Yosin. And in this, what we must do this is elaborated in Habib University, Karachi. We must do the, the best we can possibly do to our excellence, show respect to others and the environment, and do everything with passion. And be aware of consequences. Appreciate beauty. Become an aesthete. And whatever we do, wherever we are, we've got to do it in the best possible way. It's cultivation of a thoughtful of thoughtfulness, beauty. It's about mindfulness. It's about gaining knowledge and universal appreciation of all. And the Bottom line is that we have to live in a mindful and responsible way in our communities. And this comes again from the mindfulness, which we are also a member of um, South Bank University. Who do the, they've been, uh, in fact, one of their uh, key people have been visiting our school as well. And responsible citizenship. You know, our, the motto of our school is onwards, upwards. So constantly we try to do. And since two years, we've also added Itahad, Tanzim, Yakin, which is unity, faith, and discipline. If we become mindful, compassionate, and these three directives, which Jinnah gave to us, if we're able to adapt some of these, I think we should be able to get out of whatever condition we are in at present. Wow, so inspiring and so important and absolutely inspirational in every which way. Plus it's the charter of the nation. So it sort of comes full circle. Hub University is a fantastic university, and you're absolutely right at the foreground of education in Pakistan. How is uh, digital literacy such an important part of you? I know you're ready, you said, to end the interview on this note. So if you could just share and connect that to digital literacy, your passion and what you chair for Lena. Now, we all know um, after COVID, what happened to us? The small businesses, they closed down. I know from our school, there were so many children who went back to their villages because they couldn't afford to, you know, the rental and the parents' business closed down and so on. So even at that time, that's when the realization came that digital literacy and now with inflation, this is why I'm so interested that once digital literacy is given to women, they will definitely be able to um, produce better. And once they have digital in, uh, uh, literacy, they'll be able to learn much more. The whole world will be open to them. And they will be able to hone on their skills, learn better. There'll be so much of diversity, and then they will know what others are doing. and be able to improve their own lives. And like I said, when women earn, they spend it on their family. I'm sure they spend it on education because wherever in our schools, all our IRDs and everybody, they all have put their girls in 
schools for education. One of them, in fact, has even joined NUST, the university. So women will spend it on their families and on their communities. So this is why I is my this is my interest in digital literacy to improve the lives and transform the lives of them. Well, you are an extraordinary woman in whatever you may say, the pride of Pakistan and truly an asset to lean in Pakistan. Thank you so much for everything. And it's been so great to interview you today and all the best. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. And